You've probably seen the AI boom headlines everywhere. Well, today we're breaking down why many believe the AI bubble may be starting to burst. We'll cover what the AI bubble really is, how AI slop could accelerate it bursting, and ultimately, what happens if or when it does. You've seen the slop and heard about AI stealing artists' work. But in this video, we're asking, how do these problems relate to the AI bubble boom or burst debate? History shows us a pattern with railways, the dot-com era, even the Dutch tulip craze of the 1630s. I want to know, will AI follow the same path? Then we'll unpack the financial reality behind the AI boom. Who's spending what? And whether the numbers actually add up? This video was created by Samsa, a full cycle verification platform helping businesses prevent fraud and verify what's real in an AI-driven world. I'm your host, Caleb. Let's get right into it. Part one, what is the AI bubble? Just a few years ago, Google was spending tens of billions of dollars a year. This year, they're expected to spend close to 75 billion as they race to build AI infrastructure. Across big tech, hundreds of billions of dollars are being poured into infrastructure, much of which goes to computing hardware like chips, Everyone's talking about the gap between what these companies are spending on AI and what they're actually making back. But are we starting to go down another dot-com bubble crash where trillions in market value was wiped overnight? Michael Burry is betting on it, literally. You know the guy from the big shot, the one who bet against the housing market in 2007 and won big. He's so convinced AI is a bubble that he revealed big bearish bets against NVIDIA and Palantir right before shutting down his hedge fund. That's not a subtle statement, but is Michael Burry an outlier? Or is this what everyone's thinking? The bubble argument boils down to this. Companies are burning billions on AI with no clear path to profitability. Bubble believers point to OpenAI's launch of GPT-5, which some critics say fell short of the hype and it wasn't a massive leap forward many were expecting. OpenAI pulled in about 4.3 billion in revenue in the first half of 2025. Impressive on its own. But reports say it's also spent roughly 2.5 billion in the same period, with big ongoing costs for research, infrastructure, and running its models. The internet took a while to take off, as people needed to get their homes wired. In comparison, AI has one of the fastest uptakes of any technology ever. By mid-2025, around 700 million people were using ChatGPT every week. But with AI companies burning through cash faster than they can make it, how much longer can they keep doing that without collapsing? This is where it gets interesting. OpenAI's whole operation depends on hundreds of thousands of these high-end NVIDIA chips each costing tens of thousands of dollars. OpenAI can't fund all this on their own. So where's the money coming from? NVIDIA has even announced plans to invest around 100 billion to help build OpenAI's data centers. And of course, those data centers would be packed with NVIDIA's own GPUs. So NVIDIA invests in OpenAI. OpenAI buys NVIDIA chips. NVIDIA's valuation soars, they raise more capital, invest more in OpenAI, and everyone's happy, at least for now. As you'd expect, NVIDIA has made a fortune from the AI boom. GPU demand pushed its market value so high that in October 2025, NVIDIA became the first company in history to hit the $5 trillion market cap, just three months after crossing $4 trillion. Analysts think the ties between AI developers and their GPU suppliers are getting uncomfortably tight, and some companies are sensing the risk. Meta is now in talks with Google to buy and rent their AI chips, cutting some of its reliance on NVIDIA. Analysts say the deal could divert up to 10% of NVIDIA's data center revenue, a slice worth billions. So cracks are forming, but AI balls push back hard on the bubble talk. Economist Sally Ord reminds us of one key distinction. The dot-com era was fueled by speculative startups like Pets.com, 
Whereas already profitable tech giants with proven business models are at the forefront of the AI boom. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, Nvidia, and Tesla. And there are two real threats to that profitability. And the first one goes back to how AI was made possible in the first place. Today's AI models were largely trained by scraping data from across the internet including work from artists, writers, and musicians without permission. Imagine spending years developing your own style and voice, and then an algorithm copies it in seconds. Random strangers profit from it, but you, the creator, don't see a cent. For thousands of creators, that's happening right now. But AI companies argue their hands are tied. OpenAI even told the UK parliament that it would be impossible to train today's leading AI models without using copyrighted materials. But is this true? Or just the cheapest and fastest path? Unfortunately, this sort of data scraping is the rocket fuel powering the AI boom, but it might also be what pops the bubble. Studio Ghibli, the studio behind Spirited Away and My Neighbor Totoro, publicly demanded that OpenAI stop using their content to train Sora 2 the company's text-to-video model. They're not alone. Many in the entertainment industry are pushing back against AI companies' opt-out approach, where creators must manually request their work not to be used. Tech and media companies are also joining in the fight against large-scale AI data scraping, such as Cloudflare, Wikipedia, media companies. Legally speaking, AI companies have leaned on fair use arguments comparing machine learning to a person learning from books. And so far, courts haven't fully resolved the issue. But the legal storm is brewing. Sora can generate videos that resemble well-known IP, including characters owned by companies like Nintendo, which are famously protective of their copyrights. According to Mark Lemley, a professor at Stanford Law School, OpenAI is opening itself up to quite a lot of copyright lawsuits by doing this. And Japan's largest broadcasting group warns that the reproduction of copyrighted IP could destroy Japan's content production culture and ecosystem. Innovation slows down. And now the lawsuits are piling up. The AI industry is also facing major copyright lawsuits, including one against Anthropic that some analysts say could be financially devastating if millions of claimants are included. If copyright lawsuits don't break them, AI companies to come might have to pay for their training data. And will that bill fall to users? Users who are already showing signs of fatigue with AI-generated content. Now, don't get us wrong. Some of these AI-generated covers are technically impressive. You'll find 1950s soul versions of modern hits that sound incredibly polished. Just gonna stand there. And watch me burn. Well, that's alright because I like the way it hurts. You can find me in a club, bottle full of bub. Look, mommy got the X if you're into taking drugs. I'm in a having sex, I ain't in a making love. So come give me a hug if you're in a getting rough. But that's not always the case. This kind of generative content has the potential to push music, movies, and storytelling into a new era of creativity. But at the same time, it can damage people's legacies, reputations, and livelihoods, and make it much harder to tell what's genuine and what isn't. And that's the first major crack in the AI bubble. When creative industries believe the cost of human artists outweigh the benefits of the technology. Which brings us to crack number two, AI slot the wave of low effort, mass generated content that often looks polished, but adds very little value. I'm not talking about the more polished AI shorts that you may have seen, things like narrative skits or fan made experiments. I'm talking about the endless stream of rapidly generated low quality videos, flooding feeds every day. This year, Sora 2 exploded in popularity, becoming one of the most downloaded creative tools on the Apple store and giving anyone the power to generate hyper-realistic video with just a prompt. You've probably seen a Sora-style video in your feed, hyper-real clips that look convincing at first glance. 
ultra smooth like most AI tools, it can be very difficult to get something usable. Sometimes you hit the jackpot, other times the output is completely off. OpenAI, Anthropic, and the other AI giants burn enormous amounts of money running these models. And most estimates suggest they lose money on nearly every query. Every discarded prompt still costs to compute. The verdict on AI creativity is mixed. Some viewers are checking out of AI slot, bouncing after just 45 seconds of watch time. But then you've got studies saying AI-generated images can sometimes get berated as more creative or emotionally striking than human-made ones. Regardless, AI slop is flooding feeds and search results, making the internet harder to navigate and much harder to trust. And what does this mean for the AI bubble? Well, the internet is becoming so saturated with AI-generated content that human-made work is harder to find. And future AI models risk scraping from a training pool that's increasingly full of AI-made data. According to recent research, access to clean human-generated data is crucial to avoid model collapse. Where models trained on AI-made content become less accurate over time, early AI adopters with private, high-quality datasets could end up with a huge advantage. AI companies need to confront the model collapse problem before their massive infrastructure spending turns into the next dot-com overbuild, where hype outpaced real-world utility. Part 3. What happens if the bubble bursts? According to Google CEO Sundar Pichai, no company is truly immune if this does turn out to be a bubble. In particular, chip makers and cloud providers could see their valuations fall sharply. A drop like that could trigger a domino effect, slowing down not just AI hype, but the entire ecosystem around it. Companies might have to push through a period of instability as investors pull back, suppliers face reduced demand, and governments realign their growth expectations to a new reality, the AI bubble actually bursting. There's also a risk it could trigger a recession. Past bubbles certainly have. When the dot-com bubble burst, unemployment climbed and growth slowed for years. It's not all corporate doom and gloom. During the dot-com crash, Amazon lost around 90% of its value, falling to about $6 a share. Yet, today, it's worth trillions. The strongest companies will survive. The ones that adapted to the problems we've discussed in this video. Companies may need to take a more conservative approach, waiting for the biggest players to show which strategies actually work. And expectations around AI will shift too, especially the build now, profit later mentality that has defined the boom so far. As companies become less aggressive with their R&D spending, the AI market may settle into a slower, more sustainable growth path. Public sentiment around AI right now is very mixed. Many people already rely on AI tools daily using them to plan tasks, research, or manage their work. At the same time, plenty of people are still avoiding using AI, either to maintain independence in their thinking or simply because they don't feel they need it. Whatever the reason, one thing is certain. AI isn't perfect, far from it, but we want to believe it will get there. That AI will make life easier, give us more time, and even enhance creativity, despite sometimes threatening those same things. People want to work, and many need to work to survive. It's already clear that some jobs are being reshaped as companies adopt AI to cut costs or streamline processes. So if the AI bubble does burst, developments may slow down, but AI is here to stay. We've all got a taste of what AI can do, it may just need time to build stronger foundations and prove what it's truly capable of. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Is the AI bubble bursting? Or is this just the beginning? We'll see you in the next one.